Buonasera. I thought it'd be nice to do a bit of Italian pronunciation that you find in the book, A Guide to Italy. If you don't have the book, that's okay. I think this will help you out because it'll give you some very quick Italian pronunciation. I think you can learn to pronounce Italian uh, in actually a matter of minutes, maybe an hour or so if you work at it, uh, in a basic sense. Of course, there are many nuances to it. But let's begin. Uh, the first thing you want to be able to do is pronounce Italian vowels. So we have A, A, E, O, U. A-E-I-O-U in English. There is a little bit of nuance to this. So, a uh, is typically pronounced as in father. And one way that I like to look at Italian pronunciation is to look at words that we already know. That really helps us out. So some Italian examples would be words like trattoria or lava, for example. Uh, the A sound as in bay. So Italian examples, we have la te we have finale and you can hear that e at the end which is pronounced as a then we have uh again some nuance here so we have the e as in bed we have al fre e -e, al fresco tempo cello tortellini we have i pronounced e as in feet uh, some examples we have in Italian that you probably know are ravioli, tutti frutti, which is why I put this picture of gelato here on the right to entice us. Then we have a closed O as in boat. So the instrument piccolo, bravo, risotto. Then we have an open O, which is A as in bot. Think of opera, opera. U as in boot you've seen this a lot with cappuccino cappuccino and tutti frutti and bruno as in the name bruno moving on to the consonants so we do have um, many similar pronunciations in the alphabet as we do in english but the consonants do have some differences and the ones i want to point out here are the ones that are most significant and that is the c which could, has a hard sound as in ka, ko, ku, as in English k. And some examples you may know would be cannoli or terracotta. Then we have uh, an H, which we put in front of an I or an E to maintain a hard sound. That's pretty easy to remember by thinking H hard, because if we don't, it becomes a soft sound. And I'll explain in just a minute. So what are some exi Italian examples of this? We have gnocchi. Chi, Chianti, as in the wine, Chianti, orchestra, or orchestra, as we would say in Italian, Macchiato, Macchiato, Pinocchio. So you can see they're all hard right there, but, but, if I don't have that H there, it goes back to a soft sound, as in ch, as in church. So think of the musical instrument, the cello, and then Cappuccino has both. We have the hard C, which is a ka or ka, ka, pu. Then we have the chi, chino. And then of course, everyone probably knows the greeting chow, chow, C-I-A-O, which is soft as well. So you gotta pay exact, ex, ex, uh, attention, excuse me, to some of these examples here. And let's go to the G's because the G actually does the exact same thing with hard and soft. So instead of ka, ko, ku, we have ga, go, gu. And that's a hard sound, like in English, go. So a regatta or a gondola, for example. And then the G, uh, to preserve the hard sound in front of an E or an I, we stick an H in there. Again, H, think of hard, hard sound when you see that H. Uh, again, that's English, G as in go. So examples that you know, spaghetti or pizza margarita. Okay, the G hard sound but it becomes soft if we get rid of that h so the g and the j the soft sound would be like the english j in jet so examples that you probably know are gelato gelato and gina as in the name gina in italian we spell it with an i we also have uh ye the sound ye you'll see uh and we said that like ye old days of yore. Ye is a, an important one because it also is a uh, 
a definite article in Italian, meaning the plural masculine. Ita uh, an Italian example would be Italia, Italia, Italia. So, gli Italia, Italia. Uh, then we have the nya sound as in gnocchi or lasagna, lasagna, gnocchi. Uh, I hear this one mispronounced a lot. Uh, I hear many different ways it's said, gnocchi or something. But if you can say lasagna, you can say gnocchi. Okay. H, if it's at the beginning of the word, is silent. So as I mentioned before, H is only to make a G or an E into a hard sound. Um, excuse me, a G or a C into a hard sound before an I or E. So H is only to make that G or that C into a hard sound if it falls for an I or an E. So Italian examples would be hotel would be pronounced hotel, ciao versus chianti. Okay. Again, soft, cha versus chi. Ghetto versus gelato. And the R is trilled or rolled, if you can do that in Spanish. If you can't make the sound, just pronounce it as R. You'll be fine. Um, but if you can, it is trilled as in ragata or ragazza as girl. Accent. So where do we put the accents in Italian and syllables? And Italian is great because it's, uh, it's phonetic. Each uh, letter, each syllable is pronounced. Not like French or like English. We have these sort of silent things. The second to last syllable, the penultimate. And you may know this already if you know zucchini, zucchini, right? That's the second to last. Minestrone, minestrone. It's accented there. So that's typically where the stress is when, um, and then when the last syllable is accented, we put this accent mark as in cafe, cafe. Okay, so that's a quick primer on uh, pronunciation. There's a lot more to it, of course, but this is a good way to get you started reading. And when you're listening to Italian and, uh, and you see it, uh, this will help you.